It's Hopalong Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The jingle of the silver spurs heralds that fabulous figure of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, with the same California you've laughed at a hundred times in your local theater. These famous partners come riding into radio just as you've asked for them. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Our story tonight, Dead Man's Hand. <laughs> With winter coming on and the snow beginning to crawl down the distant mountains, there are a hundred things to be done around the Bar 20 Ranch. But Hopalong Cassidy knows that some of those things will have to wait, for he and California are going to have a, another job to do. Oh, it might be an easy job, like just giving a friend a helping hand. Then again, it might mean tangling with a treacherous gang who put gold nuggets about human life. Harvey, how in tarnation am I going to get my work done with you snaking me and off in the range like a lame up dog? No, I wouldn't have sent that rider out after you without a pretty good reason, California. Well, my ears are up. Let's have her. You remember Kit Kirby? Do I remember Kit? Why, he was one of the best hands we ever had. He's in trouble. Listen to this letter I got this morning. Dear Hoppy, I'm writing you because I think you're the only friend I got left. Gold is where you find it, they say. And my partner Joe and I found it after three years in these godforsaken mountains. Our first samples have saved five hundred dollars to the ton. Gee, Willikins, that's a rich strike. Sure is. We thought we were lucky until the day Joe left with the second batch of samples, and I found him ten hours later in Whitewater Pass with a bullet in his back. So I'm alone now. But that's not why I'm writing you. My wife Sally is alone too in Indian Spring, and she needs help, Hoppy. Your kind of help. That's all I can say now. Wish me luck, pal. Kit Kirby. Mm, sounds like the boy has got himself in trouble. Yeah, I believe Kit's in real trouble. More than this letter tells. Because, you see, I know Kit's handwriting. And this letter is a bad imitation. You, you mean uh, you mean it ain't? Someone uh... wants us to come to Indian Spring, California. And they want it badly enough to forge this letter. <laughs> back to Hopalong Cassidy. There was a four-day ride behind them when Hoppy and California pulled into the rough, dirty little town of Indian Spring. And as they walked into the town's rickety hotel, passed a poker game to the bar, Hoppy knew that only gold would bring Kit Kirby to a place like this. Jackson's better to open. I'll raise you, Ed. I'm good for the limit. How many? How many what? Well, all we got is whiskey, so I don't ask what do you want. I ask how many. And suppose a fellow wants a room for the night. How long are you staying? Does that make any difference? Well, not to me, but might to you. If I was you, I'd ride on to Sahara in the morning. You know, mister, offhand, I'd say you were scared of something. Well, it ain't only me. It's everybody around here. Look, if you're smart, you get right back on that horse of yours. Jerry! Uh, uh, yeah, Luke? You're around here to tend bar, ain't you, Jerry? Uh, uh, sure, sure, Well, Luke. quit your shooting off your mouth and set up them that drink. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're right, here? Right away, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry the jackrabbit. Look at him jump. <laughs> talking. All the time talking. Any objections? Yeah. Talking can get a man into a heap of trouble, pal. Remember that on your way out of town tomorrow. Okay, boys, this is the money hand. I want to be in at the start. Give me five big ones, Ed. Gosh, Hoppy, I wouldn't turn my back and hitch and post in this town. Look at that poker game. Twenty dollar limit. Well, I'd feel plum naked here without a six gun in his hip. Here comes Jerry. Look, mister, uh, this town's no place for a cowpoke on the loose. Take my advice. Ride on to Saguaro. Trail's plain and you'll have a move. Why Saguaro? They've got the law in Saguaro. Government marshal. You mean there's no law around here? Well, I don't know. Nobody's seen the sheriff since the day before yesterday. Now, that Luke Berry over there, he's a killer. Got the whole town buffaloed. 
Oh, there's going to be trouble. I can smell it. <laughs> Maybe I don't smell as sharp as you, Jay. You see, dirty I... skunk, double check me, will you? I'll show you. Get down. <laughs> Take it easy. You sure got Luke. That was fast drawn, Doc. I saw him pull a gun on me. It was self-defense. I had to shoot. Well, sure, sure, Doc. Well, I'm still a doctor, and it's my duty to see what I can do for him. Help me get him over to my office. Uh, yeah. uh, you can come up from behind the bar now, Jerry. Uh, Luke? What, what was it? Was it Luke? Why, nobody ever pulled a gun on Luke before. Well, I better get him over to my office fast. I'm afraid it's too late, but I'll do what I can. Well, I'm sure awful concerned about a fellow he just shot. Who is that, Jerry? Oh, it's Doc Sheldon. He got a shingle hanging out right across the street. Come on, California. Let's take a look. Uh, uh, look for what, Hoppy? Ain't we already seen enough? Hmm. This is a funny one. Why are you looking at them cards? Well, this is the dead man's hand, California, and I find it very interesting. This, uh, this Luke fella sitting here, wasn't he? That's right. And the fellow who shot him was here? Uh, look. Uh, well, what do you say? We just forget the cards. Sir. Wait a minute, California. Luke said something about the other fellow double decking him. Pulled his gun first, is that right? Well, sounded like that. Uh, it was under a table by that time. Take a look at the cards. Luke's got a full house here. The other man held a pair of tens. Now, why should the guy with a winning hand pull a gun first? Well, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe he was drunk. Oh, not that drunk. What's on your mind? Oh, just something to think about, that's all. Fix us up at the room, will you? My name's, uh, uh McKinney. This is California Jones. Looks like we'll be here in Indian Springs for quite a while. Well, it's your funeral. Maybe. <laughs> Don't you think... And, there's... Jerry, uh, could you tell us where Kit Kirby's wife lives? I'd kind of like to ride out and see her tonight. <laughs> So glad to see you, Mr. Cassidy. Our kid is very close to me, Mrs. Kirby. Oh, we do need help. We're afraid. The whole town's afraid. I've wished a thousand times Kit hadn't found that gold. You think that has something to do with it? Well, it has everything to do with it. The night Joe brought in the first sample, someone broke into the assay office and stole the reports. That's how news of the strike got out. Joe went to Sheriff Underwood, but I guess someone else got there first. Uh, how's that? Well, the sheriff seemed afraid to do anything. Then Mr. Sykes at Wells Fargo called a protest meeting. He was attacked on the street the next night. He left town after he got a note threatening his family. Well, didn't anyone do anything about it? The editor of the weekly paper tried to. He wrote up the story together with what he knew about the gold strike, but the paper never came out. Well, why not? His office burned to the ground last week. Presses and all. That bartender fellow knew what he was talking about. Um, when was Kit's partner shot on the trail? Just before the fire. That's when I knew it was more than I could handle, Mr. Cassidy. Sheriff Underwood promised me he'd do something, but... Yeah, but he left town in a hurry, too. You got any idea who's behind this, Mrs. Kirby? Oh, I thought it was Luke Barry until this afternoon. You heard uh, about the shooting? Yes. I want to give you something, Mr. Cassidy. It'll tell you how to get to the mine after the trail leaves Whitewater Pass. I just drew it from memory. Uh, no one knows how to get there, you see. There's a maze of mountains and canyons beyond the pass. Gets up there now, huh? He hasn't come out for a month. I haven't even seen him in that long. Well, now, uh, isn't it surprising that I got a letter from him dated less than three weeks ago? What? I, I, I guess I he... thought maybe he'd sent it out by you. But you say you hadn't seen him. You know, Mrs. Kirby, it's awfully hard to help when you just know half the story. All right. I I'll tell you. I did write that letter. But it was only because Kit needs help so desperately. And even if he could get a letter to you, you know how proud he is. He'd never ask anyone for help. I know. He's got more spirit than Topper. That's saying a lot, because Topper's a mighty fine bit of horse flesh. It was wrong of me to sign Kit's name to that letter, I know. But you do understand why I did it. Yes, I do, Mrs. Kirby. But uh, just don't make a practice of it. Or somebody else might not understand. Now about Kit. He's afraid he might get the same reception as his partner if he starts down the trail. So he's just sitting tight, huh? Yes, but he has to come out, Mr. Cassidy. It's snowing up there already, and he's almost out of supplies. What about the gold? Well, that's up there, too. Over $40,000 worth of it. And it's got to come out sometime through Indian Spring, Wells Fargo. 
Tell me, uh, is there anyone in town you know you can trust? Just Doc Sheldon. He's one of Kit's best friends. He was... Oh, I see him coming up the walk now. He'll uh, be Mrs. So... Kirby, uh, uh, we'll be in the next room. Don't tell him we're here. But he... Please. Oh, all right. Come on, California. Right please. behind you. Hello, Doc. Sally. You, uh, heard about Luke Barry? I heard he was shot. Is he... Died in my office an hour ago. He drew a gun on me first. Clear cut case of self defense. Half a dozen witnesses. I, uh, thought you'd want to know, Sally. Luke told me everything. What? Why, what do you mean, Doc? He was back at the whole thing. That business at the assay office. The fire. All of it. Sally, honey, I think we're out of the woods now. The reign of terror is over. I'm not so sure. You still think Luke was working for someone else? Oh, I don't know, Doc. It's been such a nightmare, I can't think anymore. You've got to think, Sally. But Kit, he's got to get out of the mountains before the snow bottles him up. Any news on the sheriff? Haven't heard. I think he's gone to Saguaro for the marshal. Uh, take a look out the window there. Hmm? What? That sky. Snow could hit those mountains again tonight. It doesn't make sense, Sally. We've got to go up there and get Kit out. I told you I arranged for the sheriff, Doc. I tell you, this secrecy business is only hurting Kit. Winter doesn't wait for anyone. All right, Doc. If the sheriff isn't back by tomorrow morning, I'll take you up. That's better, Sally. Now you're being sensible. I'll be here tomorrow morning at sunup. Yes, Doc, I'll be ready. Good night, Sally. Good night. You say you can trust him? Oh, I think so. I hope so. You mean I shouldn't have promised to guide him up there? No, that part's all right. But stall him as long as you can tomorrow morning. Come on, California. Where are we going, Hoppy? Best place I know at the moment. To bed. <laughs> California. California, wake up. No. California. No, thank you, ma'am. No more, me boys. I get all the roast turkey I can eat. Always thinking of food. California. Oh, uh, 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 hoppy, uh, Hoppy, uh, what time is it? Why, uh... Get your britches on. Uh, it's dark. What, uh, why... Uh... Get your britches on. I got an idea. Uh, great time to get ideas, Hoppy. Run me ragged all day, ducking lead in the barroom. Then ain't got the decent... Hurry to... up. Can't find my boots, Shane. Maybe my eyes are still closed. Never mind the boots, just the britches. Uh? You ready? Yeah, but, uh... Come on. Uh, what? What's got into you, Hoppy? What time in the morning is it anyway? It's four o'clock. Now be very quiet and follow me. Right down the stairway into the bar room. What is this? I want to try a little experiment. I give up. I'm going to get me a nice, quiet job in a chuck wagon somewhere. Hmm. Getting up at four in the morning to do sperms. When a man works as hard as I do, Hoppy, he needs his 40 winks. Here we are. This is the table. Uh, uh, what table? Well, the boys were playing poker this afternoon. Now... You sit there. That's it. And I'll sit here facing you with the bar at my back. Now, you're Luke Barry and you're holding the high hand. But for some reason or other, you tell me I'm double-decking and drawing me. Uh, what kind Wait of... Wait a minute. Oh, I'm a long-suffering critter. Why, I... Go ahead. Go on, Hoppy. I'm Luke Barry. You shoot once and miss. Then we trade shots. You miss again. I don't. Then I fire two more and it's over. Now we can go back to bed? I don't get it, California. You missed me twice. What happened to your bullets? Look, not a mark on the bar. If you shot high, you'd have busted that mirror behind it into a million pieces. Wait a minute, Hoppy. You mean them shots were, uh, uh, uh Hoppy, uh, where'd you run to? Uh, One of the table. Come on down and help me look. Oh. What you looking for? Well, let's see now. If it weren't for a mighty dark, I'd help you find it. But, uh, that is if I knew what it was, of course. Ah, here we are. I thought Doc Sheldon was pretty hasty packing Luke Barry off to his office. What you got? Ah, uh, there was no killing here this afternoon. I was a put-up jump to make Santa Kirby think Luke is dead. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy 
and California have been in a lot of strange places at some very odd hours. At the moment, they are under a poker table in the Indian Spring Barroom. It's four o'clock in the morning, and they are just sitting and thinking, trying to make sense out of the discovery that the shooting of Luke Berry was staged, and undoubtedly for Sally Kirby's benefit. This piece of wadding is what I found under the table, California. A piece of wadding from a blank cartridge. Blank cartridges? What do you know about that, Hoppy? Doc Sheldon knew Mrs. Kirby would take him up to the mine if she thought Luke was out of the way. Shh, quiet. It's the dead man on Doc. Yeah, Luke Barry is just about as dead as I thought. You better saddle up now. Right after that bluff over Whitewater Pass. Be a long way. We can't afford to be spotted. What we plan, still murder, you know. Best protection you got is staying dead. <laughs> yeah, hey, gonna hate to miss my funeral in the morning. Now, what are the plans? What about Kirby? We ought to hit the pass on the way down about three in the afternoon. Mrs. Kirby will be first, then Kirby. Remember that. Number two is Kirby. I'll bring up the rear after the pack mule. You won't be able to tell who's who at that distance. So draw your bead on number two. And don't miss. I didn't miss before, did I? He talked after you left him. I didn't like that. Yeah, don't worry. Kirby won't talk. And remember, I got to get out of this clean. Everything depends on that when the boss files for Kirby's claim. I'll see you in six weeks in Santa Fe. All right. And remember, I want you on your way to Whitewater Pass before sunup. up. Understand? Suppose you leave that to me. Why, them dirty double-crossing skunks. Uh, let's grab from Hoppy. Not so fast, California. But Hoppy, they'll get Kirby as he comes down that trail. Well, if we grab these two right now, the boss they mentioned in Santa Fe will send somebody else after Kit. The only way to settle this right is to find out who's behind it all. So we'll just have to play along. Well, let's check in my instincts. But, doggone, Hoppy, you always seem to know best. It gets downright monotonous. You trying to flatter me? <laughs> Come on. It's almost daybreak, and we got to hurry up and spruce up a bit. Huh? Well, don't folks always dress up to go to a funeral? Funeral? Hoppy, you mean... Yes, sir. Uh, Luke Mary's last rites. And I have a hunch we're going to find it mighty interesting. <laughs> in Indian Spring, I just thought that I'd get up and take charge here. Now, as you know, we're sending Luke Berry to his reward. And at a time like this, we're supposed to say something nice about the deceased. Now, being the deceased is Luke Berry, that regulation puts me at a whopping handicap. Hoppy, why in nation? Take it easy. I'll tell you when. Anyone present got anything nice to say about Luke? Hmm. Well, that being the case, sermon's over. Let him down easy, boys. Just a minute. Uh, what's the matter, mister? Let's not be too hasty putting old Luke away. I'm one of his best friends, and I'd like to see the body. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry, mister. She's nailed down to stay. Rip her up. I want to see him. You get back down. You heard what I, I said. Take the lid off of that coffin. Well, you'll get tough with me, will you? Oh. And it isn't customary for the parson to pull a gun on the chief mourner. California. Yeah? Take the lid off. All right, Hoppy. Uh, what is more easy? One of the boards is cracked. Uh, Ignition, stop it, will you? I'd right, shut up if I were you. Here she comes. There. Who's in it? I don't know. Never seen him. Good Lord. Why, it's it's Sheriff Underwood. Oh, my goodness. Just a minute, folks. Just a minute. I know I'm a stranger to all of you, but I'd like to say something. Well, speak up, mister. Yeah, what do you got to offer there? Since I rode into this town yesterday, I've uh, seen nothing but fear. All of you are shaking in your boots. Now, you're only as strong as you want to be. If you want to lie down and keep taking it, there's plenty of rats who will keep walking on you. It's up to you. How much longer are you going to take it? Well, what have you got to offer? Okay, Mr. Okay, Mr. Okay, Mr. All right, you got a jail in town. I saw it. Put the parson here inside it, and I'll have another one for you by nightfall. Come on, California, we got a job to do, and do fast. It's all right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Copy, if we don't get ourselves in the darndest places, here we are, making our own trail up the mountainside with a window whistling through our whiskers. Ah, oh, isn't that not bad? Not even enough food to keep my ribs warm. I'll ah, buy you a nice big steak just as soon as we get back to Indian Spring. No one look Barry's up in them peaks above us. I ain't too certain of ever getting back. You aren't concerned? No, just scared. Uh, I think we'd better split up here. Now, you know what you're to do, don't you? i got to do some mighty hard riding to reach the party before they get the Whitewater Pass. <laughs> a long wake up there, Sally. Seems good to be headed down this trail. There's nothing to be afraid of now, Kip. Luke Barry is dead. Oh, is that someone coming up? Well, it's Mr. Cassidy. Hello there. Hop along. Say, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, Topper needed a little exercise. How are you, Kit? Oh, golly, it's good to see you, Hoppy. Hey, wait till you hear about my gold strike. We've had a fine trip, Mr. Cassidy. Doc Sheldon's been keeping a sharp lookout. Oh, have you two met? Mr. Cassidy's an old friend of Kit's, Doc. No, we haven't met. Howdy, Doc. Guess maybe I'll ride back to the end of the line and join you, if you don't mind. Maybe I can help you watch for any danger. Oh, I don't know what... Mrs. Doing. Kirby, when we round this next bend, we'll be in Whitewater Pass. Can you make your horse stumble and not hurt yourself? Uh, I, I don't understand. Please don't ask questions. Just do as I say. All right. Now I'll go back there behind the dock, and we'll be on our way. All right, get on! Well... I don't know what your idea is in coming up to meet us, Cassidy. But I can tell you that I'm here to protect Chip. Then we have a lot in common, Doc. Well, just don't try. Oh, Sally! Sally, are you all right? Oh, yes, Chip, my horse just stumbled. What's the matter up there? Sally, if your horse is tired, why don't you come back here with me and let Kit lead the way? All right, Mr. Cassidy. Well, what's the That's matter That's a with... good idea. There. Now we'll ride through Whitewater Pass this way. Kit first. Doc second, no, wait, wait. Sally third, and I'll bring up the rear. All right, let's get going. But, but, but Cassidy, I don't think we should ride this way. A kid's out front. He's he exposed to everything. That, uh, I'll change places with him. I wouldn't have hired you, Doc. I have my gun handy in case of any emergency. C Cassidy, I, I can't ride here. I'm sick, I tell you. Mountain sickness. And there's nothing like a good ride to cure mountain sickness, Doc. Especially in number two spots. Wouldn't be surprised if you never got sick again after today. Poppy, that was a shot. What do you know? Someone's out shooting coyotes. Oh, what can we do? Leave this to me, Sally. Keep your places in line. She, she has to defend. Who's your boss in Santa Fe, Doc? That, there's no one. He's running the whole play up here, isn't he? After Kit's mine. Bound to get it no matter who he has to kill first. I tell you, I don't know, Cassidy. I... Listen, Luke Barrett's up there. He, he, he's shooting at me because I'm riding second. He... Sure, you put him there. And he's going to keep shooting till you talk. Luke Barrett? But I thought he was dead. <laughs> Too bad, Doc. That was a good hat. Look at her float down the gorge. Stop, stop him. I'll talk, Cassidy. I'll, I'll talk. Luke, stop. Stop shooting at me. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy. I'll take charge of the prisoners for a while, Hoppy. You won't have any trouble with the doc. Yeah. And it's surprising how a tap on the head will tame a fellow like uh, Luke Barry here. So you were in on this too, California. It all came so suddenly, I don't even know what happened. Well, you see, kids, California and I knew that Luke would be up on that peak of the Whitewater Pass. So when I rode up the trail to meet you, California kind of sneaked up on Luke and took over the job. <laughs> like taking candy from a baby. Okay. Then it wasn't Luke shooting at us at all. It was... That's right, it was California. But the doc thought it was Luke. And he had instructed Luke to kill whoever was in number two position. Why, that's where I had been riding. Oh, kid. And with the bullets whizzing past him, the doc just sang like a bird. And now we know about the whole crooked mining outfit in Santa Fe. Good old doc. He just needed a little persuasion. That's right. <laughs> hey, by the way, there's something I forgot to compliment you on, California. Yeah? I'm blushing already. Uh, what is it? That shooting in Whitewater Pass. Brother, when you shoot the miss, you sure don't leave much room to spare. Miss? Did you tell me to miss him? Lordy, Hoppy, I was trying all the time to hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Cassidy and California. 
Another job is done, and they're heading back to the Bar 20. But they'd be mighty pleased if you join them again next week for another story of action and excitement. Up Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Dead Man's Hand was written by Harold Swanson. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>